welcome to Make Think. I'm Alyssa Walker, and we're here with Charles Harrison, an industrial designer from Chicago, Illinois, and he is signing for Randy right now. Let's get this, let's get this close in here. Do you want your full name, just Randy Hunt, or just Randy? Just Randy, I think. Okay. Uh, He's going to put just Randy. <laughs> <laughs> just Randy. So the name of this book is A Life's Design. The life and work of an industrial designer. And as I'm paging through it, the most interesting thing I noticed is that you started at Sears? Started at Sears? Actually, no, I, I worked at Sears longer than any other place, but I okay. actually started uh, my professional career in small design studios in Chicago. I worked at three or four Got it. Years. And what year was that that you maybe started at Sears? 1961, I actually went into Sears. So what was the first thing you designed at Sears? The first thing I designed at Sears was a phonograph and stereo system for a guy who wanted me to design one that fit inside a piece of luggage. <laughs> hey, I have one of those. They had, they yeah. had, yeah. They had, that's like come they, back. They had it coming back. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, but it was just a lock of a vice president. The vice presidents. In those days in corporations, we had a lot of power. They could have what they wanted. You know. So the guys thought that it would be a good idea to have them. Their, their sales were booming in hard side luggage, not soft side. And he was looking for new opportunities to expand the market, which he thought could be a progress with everything. <laughs> Compatible with people who travel. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, you got to take that you music with you. Right? You designed the first iPod, basically. The iPod owes I, everything. You know, I'd like to claim that. But I, <laughs> I, 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 I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. If you'll endorse it, I'll. I will. <laughs> Portable music, where people can pick the music that they can listen to, right? right? So what are we going to do now about skipping over tapes? Skip from that all the way. Oh, you think? Part. Okay, so you think it's a Walkman? Yeah, <laughs> Walkman. Yeah, yeah, I inspired a Walkman. Yeah, I, I inspired a walk. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So over the course of your career, you were working in industrial design in a time where it changed dramatically. And now in industrial design, though, there's such a worry about sustainability, right? Everybody's worried about making the stuff that can't be, that goes off to landfills, can't be recycled. Yeah. Did that ever cross your mind? Did you try to tell them to make no, different we actually did things in, in, in the areas. The consciousness level in the United States was not that high. It was high. But there was a time when we had some energy crunches. Yeah. Oh, right, in the 70s. Be, yeah, yeah of had to be very energy conscious. Uh, <clears throat> the pollution thing probably was not a big deal. You know, nobody would have thought that was going to be so threatening. So, however, <clears throat> Uh, I did design some refuse containers, known in other circles as garbage cans. <laughs> that, that, uh, that, that was a big deal. I, I think that was probably one of my greatest contributions as a designer, really, uh, uh, to do that product. It was, a, it was a, the largest, technically, it was a breakthrough, and it had never been anything that large. They were molded in that process, the blow molding process. Right. Prior to that, they were just small containers for things like soap, or yeah. detergents, right. things that you use in the supermarket. But this was a pretty large container, <coughs> and it brought with it some other benefits. Uh, the material was polyethylene plastic, and we put it in a blow molding process, which gave it uh, a characteristic that allowed it <coughs> to exist and, and live outside in, in, uh, you know, in, uh, in the environment, the exterior environment. And uh, uh, that product I saw just last week, as a matter of fact, one that has been outside really? in Chicago climate. That's a pretty harsh climate. <laughs> I'm not guaranteeing neither one of us could have stood it, but, but, uh, 
from from that era, from back in the late sixties. And it's, it's still together, and it's still being used. But, but along with it came some of the, it, it made it possible for people to sleep on garbage day. And the pride that's down here, so it's hard metal cans and all that kind of rubbish. Collectors reveled in the ability to wake up the neighborhood <laughs> when, when they came. To <laughs> so, also, they, uh, it, it had a memory. So, if it, it got banged, it would return to its memory. It wouldn't have done it. Stayed there. Wow, wow. wow. It wouldn't. <laughs> I wish I could really take credit for all of it. Yeah, I think that's well, I can't. <laughs> so you're going to talk tomorrow with uh, Ethan Bodnar, who's a very young, uh, I'm not going to say that you're not young, but um, he's much younger than you. Um, and so what is your favorite piece of industrial design or design that's contemporary? Like, who's inspiring you currently? Very used to it. Well, I don't want to tip my hat if you come to me. <laughs> where my inspiration comes. All right. All right. Well, actually, I, I will let you know this much. My inspiration, maybe early on, did come from designers who preceded me. But in my later years, my inspiration came from things in nature. Very good. Very good. Plants, sky, water, you can hand things that were worried them as a bunch of people. Oh, we'll definitely come tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we look forward to it. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.